Sup, viewers. I want on a NAS for a while now, as it would remove clutter from my desktop and laptop, and yet I'll be able to still access the data wherever I am around my home. Not only that, but also for multimedia purposes. For example, my Media Center PC, which is located at the other end of my house, be able to stream movies, TV shows, etc. flawlessly without any lag or interruptions. The video is mostly centered around the case. The real act, I think that's how you say it, E-K3i, which I think is a case that is designed for office environments. It was bought from the Stardot Technologies eBay page for about 40 Australian dollars. I saw great potential in it. I have yet to see any videos about it, so I decided why not make my own. Now let's go straight to the unboxing. The first thing I picked up was the bag full of screws, zip ties and the little rubber feet. And I actually think it's a silicon feet. A DC wall adapter, rated at 12 volts, 5 amps. The power cable for the power adapter, it looks like it's uh, designed to Australian standards. A visa mount, so you can mount the case to a monitor or the wall. And now here's the case itself, nicely wrapped up, packaged safely. I was surprised at how small the case was, and how light it was. The casing is made out of aluminum. It only has a power button at the front, two USB 2 ports, and the standard uh, headphone jack and microphone jack. And then here's my dog coming over for a visit. Just wondering what the hell I'm doing. And off he goes. And now here's the case in uh, different angles. So you can have a good look at the case. The case itself uh, takes maximum of four fans. And the weird thing is the fan mounts are designed to hold 50 millimeter fans, not 40 or 60, bloody 50, which I find kind of weird, kind of strange. The power button does feel kind of cheap. It's a normal click button. It takes a bit to actually push the button down. To hear the click. Now here's everything together. All you see is what you get. It's time to look inside the case. Pretty easy to open, four screws and boom I'm in. And then another four to take off the hard drive mounting bracket. The bracket's designed to either hold two 2.5 inch drives or one 3.5 inch drive. Here are the front I.O. connectors, power switch, power LED, and hard drive LED. Bunch of connectors, CPU power, power connector for the floppy drive for some reason, and for SATA, and Molex, and obviously the motherboard, ATX connector. This is the 120 watt DC to DC board. LR1204 is the board's name, and while well, I can tell by the quality, it feels pretty sturdy, doesn't feel flimsy at all, feels quite safe. Here's the uh, cable that connects from the DC power port all the way to the LR1204 board. Here is the overall view of the, um, the casing, the screwdriver set's not included, that's my own. Now this is my build, we've got an i5-3470 in it, socketed at 1155, underclocked to 2.2 gigahertz and even uncored by 2, so the CPU is running as a dual core one. Why I did that is because I was trying to run the NAS without a CPU fan, just for noise reduction purposes, but the thing was the CPU still ended up running at a temperature of 65 degrees with the case lid on and I just felt really uncomfortable leaving my NAS running at that temperature 
As with the fan, it dropped down to 45 degrees, so it was a significant drop. Now the board I'm using is the ASRock H65M ITX. Obviously it's an ITX board. I also installed 8 gigs of RAM, the Noctua NH-L9i CPU cooler, a Samsung Evo 850 SSD at 250 gigs, two Seagate 2.5 inch hard drives I set up in RAID 0. Each one is 5 terabytes, giving me a total of about 10 terabytes, plus an additional Seagate 2.5 inch drive graded at 3 terabytes on its own. I have Open Media Vault installed on the SSD and I'm running Mini DLNA, BitTorrent, SSH and Samba. Even when it's underclocked and under cord, the CPU usage doesn't go past 10% or the memory usage doesn't go past about 5%. Now I did have some issues with my setup. One was that I was not able to install the Noctua fan that came with the cooler. Now this was due to the interference caused by the thicker 2.5 inch hard drives. That is why the fan is mounted in such a way. It is also meant to blow the heat out of the case through the top while the cool air is being sucked in from the sides. This issue will not exist with the slimmer 2.5 inch hard drives below 3 terabytes. However, with one single 3.5 inch hard drive, I have a feeling the issue will be there. I believe Intel's stock coolers are too tall for this case, so any cooler you are going to implement in this situation, the hard drives must be shorter than the height of 37mm, the total height of the Noctua cooler. For example, the Silverstone NT07-115X has the height of 23mm. It would work. But how efficient of a cooler is it is something I do not know. It is however rated for 65 watts. If the case was only slightly bigger, it would be much more fantastic. Probably an extra 2 to 3 centimeters for either width and height. However, it does have a significantly larger brother, the Real and EI7, which allows a slim optical drive and a low profile graphics card. But hey, what do you expect? This case was essentially designed for office environments. Basic computer to work on Microsoft Word. The lack of area for cable management can be seen somewhat as an issue, but I gladly give it up for the small footprint of the case. The 50mm fan mounts can be seen as a negative, not only because companies such as Noctua or BigQuiet don't produce 50mm silent fans, but also that if you do install 50mm fans, it may make it even tighter for cable management. I still find having the Molex and the floppy connect a bit annoying since it's not like I have IDE hard drive lying around or even a place to install a floppy drive. The case is great for its price and size for anyone who just wants a small NAS or even a multimedia center. My current build utilized stuff I had lying around and the only two things I bought for this project was the case itself and the cooler. For me it was worth it. It provided me many different benefits and advantages such as the ability to stream multimedia. I don't need to have my desktop running to stream content to a TV. I am also able to wirelessly access the storage. For example, I don't need a computer to transfer and store pictures and videos I take with my phone. All I need to do is just use the file manager app on my phone. And that's it. Straight transfer. The NAS is also quiet, way quieter compared to my PC, which is also utilizing a Noctua cooler. So I could pretty much leave it on 24 seven and won't notice it at all, except at night by its purple pink power LED. It is very small, so caution is advised as the power supply can only supply 60 watts. It is a good designed case, a worthy bang for the buck. Thanks for watching. Check out my Patreon, subscribe, check out my other videos. Doodle -doodle.